Hello everybody, this is Chris back here with another BMW 39 video. Today in the build series, we're gonna be transferring the black interior that I have from the M5 that's currently installed in my Silver Wagon into the blue Bieritz Blau E39 wagon that we're gonna be doing the M5 swap on. So I'll show you guys um, basically how you could do a carpet swap on your vehicle. You're gonna have to take out the seats and all of the other trim on the car first. And while we're in there, we're also gonna be looking at some of the rust that's underneath the floorboards, so inspecting everything in the floorboards. And then we're probably, if we find some rust, which I'm sure we will, we're probably gonna have to use some Bondo, some grinding, some painting, because we wanna seal that off and make sure that the car doesn't rust out through the floorboards. So let's get into that. Let's start taking the seats out first and then we'll be able to take the carpets out. And I'll show you guys, there's actually like a pretty common problem people run into when removing the carpets on these cars is that the heater core goes straight through it. And so in order to remove the carpet, in theory, you'd have to remove the heater core, which means taking the whole dash apart, ton of work. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick tip on how to cut around the heater core. And that way you won't even be able to tell that any modification was made to the carpet. So. Let's get into it. So to give you guys a quick idea, here's the gray interior that we have on the car. And it's really easy to do a gr black dashboard retrofit because the dashboard actually separates in two pieces here. So we'll be able to take the black dash pieces out of the other car and put them in here. Same thing with the console. You'll find that on the E39 Touring though, the rear seats are not gonna fit from a sedan. So the bottom section nor the top section will work obviously, but the carpets are 100% the same. So we can get these mounted all the way up to here they do have to be cut though to provide a hole for the cargo cover brackets which are right here so i'll show you guys that too Currently, yeah, both seats are removed. The uh, center console is gonna come next, so we'll take off the front carpets, and then we'll be able to get most of the screws for this. I think we have to pop the radio and the climate control out. Um, and so then once the center console is removed, we'll have access to remove the lower dashboard on the right, lower dashboard on the left, and then we can start pulling the carpet out. Now, part of why we're doing this too is because in order to put in a third pedal which is going to be our clutch obviously uh, we have to route the clutch fluid line that goes from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder and so that means that this while the master is up here it actually goes down and around underneath the carpet and then to the transmission which is right under here so yeah we'll be taking apart all of this kind of stripping it down and then getting the m5 interior in so i hope you enjoy So now that we've got all of the center console pieces out and the seats out, we're close to getting the carpets out. What I'm gonna do, because this is gonna be a manual conversion in this vehicle, is I'm gonna go actually under the vehicle now and I'm gonna disconnect the automatic transmission cable that goes to this unit. That way I can have this out cleanly because we might be reinstalling it in the silver car. And then that will give us plenty of room. So where we're gonna cut is right here as close as we can to this AC box. 
and then over here as high as we can and that way when we put the trim piece on this side it'll cover any blemish or area where the, the silver carpet remains. You're gonna have to remove the accelerator pedal and also all of the trim pieces around the car and that will allow you to pull the carpet off. Now I'm gonna show you something quickly that might help you get the gas pedal off. I have failed with this and it takes a lot of attempts to get this. This one is actually a little bit marred up from me trying to remove it and install it so many times, but it does give me the opportunity to try again on this gas pedal and to show you guys how the clip mechanism works, which is uh, kind of simple, but because you can't see it underneath the carpet, it's uh, pretty hard to disengage. So if your gas pedal's never been touched before, then this clip right here will be engaged, and this is how the pedal sits inside the carpet. So you've got at the front side of it, because this is your where your foot touches, at the front side of it, you've got two outside clips, and those need to be pulled towards the back of the car. And then on the back side of it, you've got a finger clip that you can grab from above the carpet hopefully and disengage by pulling it towards the engine so by doing those two things i would do this one first and then what i'm going to try is using a pry bar under the gas pedal while pushing up on it and using the clip to disengage it and that's how i was able to get this one off We're going to do our first assessment of the baseboard rust damage and I'm looking at this for the first time just like you guys are. So I was worried about this area right here. It's still wet even. Um, so we're definitely going to have to remove majority of this uh, sound in insulation from the factory. We're going to have to grind that down, all the rust off, seal it, uh, reinforce it. It doesn't look like any major big holes, but we'll see as we get into it. The passenger side looks clean. That's pretty good. A little bit in the corner, so they'll get grinded off and sealed. Um, other than that, it looks like basically uh, a little bit less rust than we had on the silver car, I think. So again, kind of supports my thought that uh, 
this is a cleaner chassis to be doing the swap with. So what we'll be doing is removing the rust inside the car and sealing it, reinforcing it, making sure you know no issues are gonna arise in the future. And then we're gonna be adding some additional sound deadening material throughout the car on the rear seat panels and all that to make the car a little bit more soundproof, which is gonna make a big deal when the windows are closed on the car. And we're also gonna go and look at the clutch line assembly now. We're gonna try and install that. Here's a look at the carpets that we removed. They are in too bad condition. I sprayed some degreaser on these to give them a little light soak before I wash them. But I think we're gonna end up putting those back in here and maybe even painting these or dyeing the carpets black because I think black would look good. No matter what color seats or door cards you have, I think black carpets always look best. Got most of the rust removed. A lot of it was just compiled of surface rust and these uh, weather caps that were rusted all the way through. So they're definitely made out of some cheaper metal or something. Uh, but the body of the car is super good. I ended up using my fingers to take out most of the rust in that biggest hole there, but I'm gonna take a, uh, a hammer in a second and try to punch through there, make sure that I got all the rust, the last of it. But once we grinded off all the rust with the brushes then we vacuumed inside this car here you can see this side looks super mint not a lot of markings here what we're going to do is we're going to use a rust reformer preventer spray anything would really work clear coat or paint but i'm going to use a clear coat sort of rust converter and then on the whole inside of the chassis i'm going to be using a clear coat to make sure that this is sealed as best as possible i'm sure i'm missing some places and this isn't gonna be a permanent solution, but hey, I think it will last another 20 years considering the car is already 20 years old. So let's try to get rid of this rust and hope for the best. So now the clear coat's drying everywhere that there was rust before. I used the rust converter and then some clear on top, even on this side in the spots where I thought rust could start coming up and showing. Even though it was clean, I sprayed some clear coat. So the floor is very well sealed. Now we're gonna use some of this patch material. It's kinda like metal and it's adhesive on one side to patch these three holes on this side because these are the ones I'm worried about. And also I think that there's a hole in the firewall up there that I should patch too. So by cutting these into little squares and then using some Bondo, which I'm not gonna show you guys, so I'll just save you some troubles and using the magic of editing, I'm gonna show you the finished product. All right, so here we are back in the car. The Bondo has dried. I've already sealed it with a layer of clear coat. And so I've done that in a couple of spots here because in the other side of the car, there's the rubber plugs that are still there and I actually did a clear coat over them as well. So this whole area should be 
100% sealed. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in some sound deadening material. I did this on the silver wagon already, but we're gonna do this on this car as well. And so the car already comes with sound deadening material in a lot of places, but to cover up these spots, we're gonna lay it down in almost excess, but not too much, because we don't wanna make the car too much heavier. But hey, it's th the total weight of this stuff would be like 30 pounds if I added the whole thing. And it's gonna make the car a lot quieter so that when we upgrade the sound system in this car, it's gonna be very quiet from the inside, but very loud from the outside. So we'll add this in, especially around here. You can see how thin the metal is. There's already plenty underneath the seat right here, but we'll fill in some of the gap. All right, so here we're gonna deal with the third pedal. And again, you're gonna have to remove the carpets to install the clutch lines that go underneath the carpet. So you have to remove this rubber plug. I put mine here. And then there is this sound and heat insulation underneath it, but it's already pre-cut in a circle. And so you're gonna have to use a screwdriver or your finger and you're gonna have to poke that through to make the opening where the clutch fluid line is gonna travel through. So make sure you get this rubber seal pushed all the way through and then later when we're swapping the motor we'll be able to adjust this and make sure that it's ultra weather tight on the other side but on this side you see it has an opening for the body right here so let's get that sealed up really good and then we'll worry about getting our third pedal in for the clutch and then the smaller brake pedal which is obviously for the manual transmission cars now here's why it's super easy to do a three pedal conversion on most bmws and that's because the steering bracket which holds the brake pedal also already has a lever for the clutch so let me see if i can get my flashlight on that so there you can see it that is the pin that the clutch would rotate around and that's the pin that the brake would rotate around so this is an automatic car. Obviously the clutch has never been used before. That's why it's a little rusty. We don't care about that, but we're gonna slap a third pedal on it. And then from there, we're going to put our master cylinder on. So the master cylinder is right here. It mounts up with a couple of bolts. Again, those are already on the brake bracket. The one thing we're not gonna be installing is the supplemental spring that goes behind the clutch right here. And it actually like squeezes with the body of the car or that bracket up there as you press the clutch down. But since we're installing an upgraded clutch in this car, it's already gonna be stiffer. And I don't like any fake spring pressure. So I like to feel my clutch on the way out. And uh, I like to feel how solid my new clutch is. So I usually take these off, but if you want to install it, have fun. on but now we've got to get the hole open for the clutch fluid line so I've already got the fluid line attached to the master cylinder but you can install this after the fact too but we're gonna try to get the punch done out so this is what it looks like in the firewall let's see if we can get that out you can see you can kind of see it from this side but you won't be able to punch it out so let's check it out up top so there it is I'm gonna take the flashlight off of it so maybe you can see it better but that is the center hole that we need to punch out. And we'll just grab like a hammer and a chisel really quick and pop this baby free. It's pre-cut from the factory, so you don't need a lot of force to do this.
Now off to the side, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting the carpets black from the silver that's original on that 540. And this is going to go in the silver parts car that we have, but I figured I'd test out this fabric vinyl uh, spray from Duplicolor and um, I'll show you guys this now and hopefully it comes out all right. I'm going to use this uh, brush right here to really get it in the fibers and keep it from uh, sticking up and creating like clots, you know what I mean? So that'll keep it smooth and hopefully we maintain the original texture of these carpets. So here are some pictures that I took while I was painting the carpets. Remember this is vinyl and fabric dye. Uh, it doesn't explicitly say it's for carpets, but I've seen a lot of people use them on carpets. So this is the result here and it came out all right. I would say it looks visually, it looks great. Like there's a little bit of marking, I think from my spray pattern. Maybe I should have mixed that up a lot more on this side. I feel like it's a lot better. Um, here are the little trim pieces and here's the rear carpet section. Now here are the M5 carpets, the black ones. I took these down to the local car wash because I thought that there was still some dirt in them and I just pressure washed the crap out of them. Got a ton of dirt stains out on the back and the front. So this is what's gonna go into the blue car. But like I said, we painted this. I wanted to see how it worked because I was thinking about painting the trunk with the black fabric dye, but I decided against it. So the reason that I'm not gonna paint the trunk is because it comes out crispy. I don't know how to describe it better than that, but like seriously, it looks good. I brushed the fabric between coats to you know help get even coverage, and it looks really good. It looks like the fa the fabric is you know fluffy like normal carpet, but it it's just kind of like crispy. It's like not like smooth nylon like you would expect it to be. So. You know, I don't know how often you feel the fabric of your carpet up. Um, not a lot, honestly. So if you're looking for a solution just to visually change it, and I think would I do this on a car with uh, gray carpets? Yes. If I had gray carpets, I would immediately go black carpets using this stuff. But if I have the option to get original black carpets, trust me, these feel so much better. Just nice and soft. And these are still wet but I'm letting them cook a lot before we put them in there. So they're gonna be 100% dry, cooked, before they get put in the wagon here. Otherwise, we've got everything back in, including the AC ducts. So we'll be able to put our carpets down on here. Got plenty of sound deadening. I'm really happy with how that turned out and already swapped out for our black M5 seatbelts. And here's what the painted carpet looks like inside the car. Again, it's pretty rich. Um, to my eye, I'm not sure how it pulls up on camera, but to my eye, it looks like new, fresh carpets, honestly. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you can hear the difference, but definitely just feels kind of crispy. It should be interesting. Two things to see is if it loosens up over time, like, I don't know, you know, moisture in the air or something like that, maybe it cures differently. And the other thing that I should be interesting is with it being kind of stiffer, is how does it track dirt? Does it, you know, vacuum up well? I'm not sure. So one thing is I imagine this stuff would work really good on the uh, like console pieces and maybe leather. I'm not sure, probably leather actually. Um, so it would be interesting to try it on the seats, but maybe we'll try like a leather test spot first somewhere else on the car. Uh, for now, we're gonna be reassembling the interior on this car and then making room in the garage because we need to let those dry and then install them in the car and get that black interior in here. And then we'll put that car in this spot right here. And we'll be swapping around like the exhaust and the rear axles and all that fun stuff. And then we'll swap the motors.
There you go, that's how to swap the interior and install the third pedal assembly for your E39 if you're doing a manual swap or a carpet swap. I hope that you learned something and if I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. So in the next episode, we're gonna be swapping the M5 motor from this car into our Touring and we're also gonna be swapping the rear subframes because we have the polyurethane equipped subframe with M5 axles and M5 differential on this car. So we're gonna put that on this one we're gonna take the front engine cradle with the motor and put it in this one and swap all the bad parts onto this chassis right here so we can keep going on this build. And little teaser for you, we'll be installing this in an upcoming video. I'm really excited to be putting this spec stage three plus kit on the M5 drivetrain. This, the clutch is one of those things that you wanna replace once and probably not have to do again. So we went all out with the stage three plus. I hope you enjoyed the video. That was a long one. It really took a lot of work and here in the Florida sun, it is just scorching outside, but we got it done. Stay tuned for the next few videos. We'll see you in the next one.